Okay, we're going to call to order a meeting of the Cumberland School Committee uh, Fiscal Management Subcommittee dated uh, July 15th, 2021. Um, this meeting, um, the public can participate in this meeting remotely, but not in person by calling uh, area code 317-626-6799, webinar ID number 990-6445-6649 or join at the Zoom link, um, which can be accessed through the Cumberland Schools website, passcode 156082. The first order of business is the approval agenda. So I got a motion to approve the agenda. Did you wanna read the whole in compliance? I, be, I would be happy to, Ms. Smith. Uh, approval agenda, uh, tonight we're gonna to approve the minutes. We're gonna pay the bills. And then we have the business office monthly report, Sodexo food services report, facilities report. Uh, we have four resolutions to discuss and potentially vote on, the CHS activity report, and then public comment. Can I get a motion to approve? Yes, and I, I apologize, uh, Mr. Collins. I, I meant um, related to the compliance of the governor's order. I would, I would just but, check we're in compliance. No, we're check whether we're in compliance with the governor's executive order 21 72, dated June 24th, 2021. Uh, discussion and a vote to whether or not there's public access to the meeting through adequate alternative means. Mr. Chandler, is there anybody from the public present? Yes, there is. Okay, so the public does have access now. So I motion to approve the agenda. And I second that. The motion passes two to zero. <clears throat> Second order of business. And I want to point for the record that uh, Mr. DeModica is not with us tonight. <clears throat> the second order of business is the approval of the minutes dated 6-24-2021. Cindy put those in the folder. Uh, Ms. Smith, did you have a chance to review the minutes? I did and I motion to approve. And I second that <clears throat> and the motion approves. Oh, uh, second by me, all in favor? Aye. And the motion passes two to zero. Okay, so much for that. Uh, we have payment of the bills, but uh, if it's all right, I would like to jump ahead because I think uh, Sean is here with the Sodexo Food Services Report. Um, would it be all right if we go ahead and jump to Shauna so she can give her report and get out of here? That's fine with me. Okay, Sean, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can. We can, yeah. Go right okay, ahead. I'm just going to share my screen. And uh, before that, I just wanted to do a quick introduction. Hi, Phil. Nice to virtually meet you. Uh, my name is Shauna Spillane. I'm the food service director here for Sodexo. I started Hello. in the 16, 17 year. Uh, you might have known my predecessor, Mark Tucker. And also on the call, I have Kristen Morello uh, listening in. She's our district manager uh, for Rhode Island, Massachusetts and parts of New York. Uh, so she definitely supports us virtually in this meeting. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So here is a document that I share monthly on our fiscal call, um, just reviewing the close of the previous uh, month. Uh, but here we are at the end, finally, of this crazy school year. Um, so definitely, I'm, I'm happy to report um, that we have been very successful in our program. A lot of unknowns going into this budget, um, a lot of changes throughout the year with the hybrid distance learning, uh, students returning back to school, and of course, a lot of the USDA uh, regulations that have changed for us. Um, so I want to bring everyone's attention to um, the June operating close. Um, our department costs were 162000 uh, with total revenues of two twenty two. dollars um, Typically, June is not that big of a month for us, but of course, with the extended school calendar year, uh, we did have an extra operating week. Um, so that brings us to a 60K uh, gain for that month. And then this blue box actually totals up everything uh, for the entire year. Um, so you can see that our department costs uh, were just about 86, 846K. And with our total revenues of 1.1 million, that brings our gain uh, to 274K for the year. Um, and of course, this is much higher than our budget that we had planned um, in last year with a lot of the uncertainties. And I just wanted to quickly share uh, some of the reasonings why uh, we've seen such a high increase this year. Um, of course, that's attributed 
to our 100% free meals granted by the USDA with a higher reimbursement rate. Um, it's also very apparent of our increased meals because of our take home packouts that we've been doing over weekends, vacations, distance learning days. Uh, we've had a great opportunity and a great success with that, sending meals home with students. Uh, we've also seen an increased participation in our program across the board since students came back in uh, late March, um, about a 15% year over year of the program. Uh, that's definitely attributed to the free meals. Um, of course, we've had labor savings due to hybrid days and distance learning days. We've also had labor savings due to a variance of our staff shortages. Unfortunately, uh, we've been short almost four FTEs this entire year, uh, which obviously has saved us in some labor costs. Um, again, our product cost was lowered by utilizing USDA commodities. Uh, some of the funds were left over from the 1920 school year and most of our product also uh, when we abruptly closed in March. And we've also had just a, a few savings with some limited menu items, um, some lower inventories and some also some PPE and paper bulk up that we had um, taken in our 19 budget. Uh, so again, we didn't have to purchase gloves, sanitizer, masks, things like that we had already had previous to going into this budget. Um, so again, that brings us to a total gain of the uh, 274K and it actually um, meets our client contract um, that we have with, with Cumberland. It actually exceeds it. Um, so we are um, you know, coming off of a very successful year. And I'm happy to take questions about this document or, or any of the bullet points that I had just shared with anyone. Do we have any questions for Shauna? I, I do have a question. If it's, a, it's Carrie Smith. Shauna, um, Hi, I, Carrie. Actually, I, I'm just wondering uh, what you're going to be seeing for the upcoming year because certainly we have seen a high cost um, in, in produce and in, like you said, paper goods or whatever else it may be. So uh, are you planning ahead for that, knowing that we, we have this issue happening throughout the US? Certainly, yeah, we actually just completed our budget um, late this year and there had been a lot of factors you know, coming down the pipeline, logistical, um, shipping concerns, supply chain. Um, some of our manufacturers have, have increased costs due to, to labor increases and, and product availability. Um, so we did put about a 20% uh, <laughs> buffer in the budget um, for that. And we are actually also have the information from the USDA and RIDE that the meals will be free. Uh, next year. So we've also had um, a little bit better of a planning going into the 21-22 school year with that information. Wow, that is, that's incredible that they're going to continue it for another full year. Yep, and we actually did um, not officially make that announcement um, because we're, you know, RIDE is kind of a little bit backed up with information coming down from the USDA, but I'm, I'm sure that closer to the school year beginning, we'll do some more um, information out to the families about that. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, uh, seeing as there are none, I need a motion to approve the Sodexo Food Services Report. I'll motion to approve. I will second, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Just a point of order too, I think, uh, Procedurally, I think at the beginning, I forgot to, I motioned to approve the agenda. I don't, but I don't think we actually voted on it. So um, I don't know if we can retroactively go back in motion to approve the agenda. Rookie I'll mistake. motion to approve the agenda. I will second that and all in favor? Aye. Okay, I'll check that off the list. Just in case there's somebody watching, you know what I mean? Uh, so jumping ahead, hopefully there's people watching. Um, next up would be, I'm gonna skip ahead again for the facilities report. Is Will available to offer the facilities report? Okay, so. No, this time. I think Will was dealing with a situation at one of the elementaries, a fire alarm. Okay, fair enough. If he comes in later, perhaps we can go back. Um, so he's not here. So I, I We'll uh, ask that we motion to table the facilities report until potentially will coming later. That, that's fine with me. Should we just go back up then and Mark, then 
see if yeah, he's fair. not here at that time. Fair enough. So uh, we'll, we'll go back to number four in the agenda, which is the payment of the bills. Uh, we have invoices uh, for 20, the fiscal year 2021 in the amount of $2,042,999.07. And for this fiscal year 21-22 in the amount of $433,151.64 with the total amount of the invoices being 2 million. Four hundred and seventy six thousand one hundred and fifty and seventy one cents. Is there anything you want to pull out of there, um, Ms. Smith, uh, for Alex to speak to? Uh, just a, a few, if, if I could, Alex. Um, so um, I guess there's two reports that are available to us. So I'm going to take the 50 page report first. And I'm just wondering uh, this ADS construction project uh, amount for the 97,125.70 on the first page. And it's also highlighted. Um, I'm guessing that this is part of one of the resolutions that could have come through us already. Yes. Okay. Could we try to get the resolution numbers, uh, even if it's just the last four digits? Yeah, or... and I thought she had put on there um, that it was a lease. Maybe she highlighted it. And, oh, oh, up at the top of the page, she had she wrote lease, and then she highlighted it in okay. yellow because you had asked if something was either the lease or the bond, right? Um, to identify it. But yeah, I'll, yeah, we'll we can get the resolution numbers. Okay. All right. That's that's great. So, and I this is part that... of the this is part of the high school security project that right. you approved a contract for um, $703,000 for. Right. That's going I on just, there. I just want to make sure that I can correlate some of these to the sure. resolutions. I was, I was going back looking through things and then I finally said, you know what, let's, let me stop and just ask the quick question. It's probably faster. Um, okay. Um, and it seems that we have a few others. I'm trying to get to the page. I apologize. I'm, I'm split screening it here. And it was before the lawyer's fees. Okay, well, I can't find what that question was. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to skip just on page 47, if I could. Okay. And, and I think I've asked this before, but I'm not quite sure. The U.S. Bank Equipment Finance payments. I'm still going to take my clip off here. I can't even see it yet. Okay. Yep. U.S. Bank. Right. So the top, the top two, and those payments. It says contract payment. So, but this is not related to the school projects, is it? No. These are copy machine payments. Okay. That's what I was trying to find out because I, I couldn't understand it when it said supply freight. Right. Um, and I, like I said, I thought I had asked about U.S. Bank at one other time. Right. So, so that makes sense. And then my only other question, and this one gets a little bit muddled, I believe. The Durham payments uh, that are all listed, it appears there's a large contingent or a large amount of those that are contingent on our later vote and discussion or discussion and yeah, vote. we've 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 processed the checks because they asked, um, sure. they asked to have them for June thirtieth for their financials, right? And so I said I can't release them to you. I said I can date them for you if that helps you with your auditors, right? You know when you go to re uh, record the income, but depending on whether the school committee approves paying you the forty five percent for distance learning days will depend on if we're making those payments. Right. So I know that this is going to come up for a vote later. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll get voted on with the open meeting. Um, I would prefer to defer the approval of the bills, less those Durham's, just the Durham amounts that are related to the contractual. I would prefer to defer that to the full committee. And I'm not quite sure how I can how that can be done. So I think the question is, uh, we, when we motion to approve the bills, we'd have to pull out Durham. Um, Alex, I know this is quick math, but what is the total dollar amount out of the invoices that goes to Durham or somebody? The good thing is they were split. So I think that we can figure out, I can probably tell you what they were. 
Oh yeah, there's pages of them. <laughs> right, but they were split, so it did not. But but Miss Smith, it was Ms. separated to that. What I would say to that is is the full committee has the final say on the payment of the bills. Correct. So we could we could pass it through the subcommittee, and if and if if the 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 vote fails to pay the bills to Durham, um, in in an executive or in the next session, then we can pull it out at that point. You understand? So we we could probably just so okay. that way that that way we don't have to like have an extra meeting and go backtrack. Uh, as long as there's no procedural, I, so um, I think we could save a step, and you know we don't also want to get into a situation where you know they, they want money. We have to have a meeting next week, you know, or Friday. No, you know. I didn't want that. You're correct, Mr. Collins. I, I didn't want that whatsoever. I just, uh, you know, I, I have no problem with the remainder of the bills. It was just because we haven't done the final vote. I wasn't sure if there was any legal technicality where we do have to remove them. Uh, and then we, as we did last time, we could defer it to the full um, for approval and not have that part approved through us. Okay, fair enough. If we just yeah. get that dollar amount, on, we, we, I'll, I'll add that to the motion. Um, right, and I think... Anybody have anything to add? I, uh, Dr. Thornton, I think you were talking, but we're muted. I was muted. I think I, I agree with you. I think it made sense just to pass it on to the committee. I think that's something you can do. Okay, and the two amounts that I have reflected on those is $262,279.43. And six hundred thirty-one thousand two hundred and twelve dollars sixty-seven cents. So two hundred sixty-two thousand two hundred seventy-nine dollars, and how much? Uh, forty-three. Forty-three cents. cents. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at close to uh, okay. Um, so I, I don't know about you, Miss Smith. Miss Smith, I would be comfortable just moving ahead and passing the, the full invoice off to the committee. And if something were to happen, um, then we can we can motion at the open session, um, the full meeting. Um, OK, I'll, I'll do whatever you're comfortable with. because I don't want to because if it, if it le doesn't leave here, it doesn't go to the committee. Right. Um, yeah, and we so don't. I and we need both votes because, you know what I mean, with, with uh, Mr. Demotic absent. Right. And that's where if we took those two amounts and we subtracted it for the two million for the month, I would approve those separate and then I would do a contingency approval based upon the final vote in committee on the um, okay. theorems. And okay. Katie, I don't know if we can defer to you on legal if that's possible. Can, I, 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 can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. For a minute, you're asking if, if you can um, not vote here and vote in open for the with that part taken out. Right. Yes. I guess. Right. I just want to. The, yeah. Just for the record, approval here. Like you can always approve it contingent upon um, the full school committee uh, approving it. There's no. Uh, approval here does not mean that the checks are mailed. The school committee is the ultimate gatekeeper on that. So we can do a full approval of the full payment of bills contingent upon the passage in the open school committee meeting with all members. I'm, I'm sorry, Katie, you're cutting this, up. This approval does not allow does not allow the checks to actually be mailed. Right. Okay, so if that's the case, um, Dennis, I have I have no problem with it. Then, uh, you know, I just I, I want to make sure that we bring it up in in the committee meeting as well because we cannot approve those bills in the committee then until the other vote occurs. Yeah, so I will point out that, that uh, this is contingent, and I added up the total here of uh, eight hundred ninety three thousand four hundred ninety two dollars and ten cents. That's due to Durham. Okay. Um, so with that, are there any other questions? No, thank you. So I would motion, uh, I would ask for a motion to approve the payment of invoices in the amount of $2,476,150.71 um, with the contingent that the $893,492.10 owed to Durham is contingent upon a successful vote of monies owed to Durham um, in our full committee meeting. Can I get a motion? 
I will motion to approve that whole second. one. <laughs> uh, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure I don't lose my notes here. Um, so that Thank passes. Thank you very much for uh, helping okay. me out there. That's what teamwork's all about, Ms. Smith. So, all right. And for the record, Mr. Demodica again is absent. Payment of bills are done. Next up is business office monthly report. report. Alex? Yeah, no, I don't have a, a, a budget report for June at this point. The end of the year, the, it's a little different than the end of a, um, a regular month because I don't worry about, you know, uh, bills that are coming in the next month and, you know, uh, they're going to be paid. The bills that are coming in in July are now going to be accrued back. And uh, we have to do a lot of payroll entries because um, part of the first week's pay, the first check in July, part of that payroll is accrued back to uh, the previous year, eight days of it. And so those, all those entries are being made. So in August, I'll give you a better June report that, but I could tell you, you know, um, we're not gonna use the entire 2 million change of surplus that we had budgeted. You know, we, we'll use a portion of it, but not all of it. So our fund balance will go down, but not as much as we had thought it would because we had budgeted $2.3 million for use of fund balance. And it won't, and we won't use that much, but I'll, I'll get, you know, in August, we'll have a, uh, we'll have some really good preliminary numbers. Yeah, I was just writing that down. Um, okay, so thank you, Mr. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Pergano? Pergano? Seeing there's none, we will move on to the next item, which is again, facilities report. Is Mr. DeJesus here? Uh, no. I do not see him. So next up, uh, discussion and or vote to approve resolutions. SCPR, first up is SCPI 07-2021-34. Partial payment for Univents e e Systems, a resolution empowering the Cumberland School Committee to make partial payment to e, e Systems of Canton, Mass for purchase of Univents for both the main high school building and high school trans building in an amount not to exceed $441,213.53. Mr. Brignano, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, As you it? recall, we're doing Univents at both the main high school and the trans, trans building. Both projects are in excess of six hundred thousand dollars. What this is is the cost that E and E laid out for the purchase of the Univents. There's no labor or stuff yet being billed to us, but they did buy all the Univents to make sure that we would have them in on time. There was all there was always that question of, um, you know, if we had a delay in getting them, you know, would we be able to get them installed in time for school next fall. And so this is just paying them back for the unit events that they purchased and that we're in possession of in the in the schools. So they've come in already. Yeah. That's really good timing. Yeah. That's good. good news. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Pignano? Okay, seeing as there are none, I need a motion to approve SCPI 07-2021-34 in the amount of uh, in the amount of $441,213.53. Can I get a motion to approve? I motion to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. The ayes have it two to zero. Next up is uh, SCPI 07-2021-35, Contract for School Dental Services, a resolution empowering the Cumberland School Committee to award a contract to Resnevic Scholastic Dental Services for dental uh, social scholastic services for the 2021-22 school year in an amount not to exceed $2,922. Mr. Pignano. Yes, this is, um, you know, I don't know um, if, if members of the school committee know, but we used to have, um, two twins that lived in town. Uh, I, I think they're the ward twins that went to Cumberland High School and uh, did our dental work for us. And they would, they used to pretty much volunteer their time to do it. Uh, they, I think they used to charge a dollar a child or something like that. And it used to come to maybe fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. Um, they notified us a year or so ago that they, uh, that they just couldn't do it anymore. They had done it for a number of years. And so we went out to bid for the services and we didn't get anyone 
to bid, no one bid on it. So then last year came up and because of the pandemic, the state didn't, had no interest really in trying to enforce dental examinations. And so we didn't have to worry about it. So um, this year I got contacted by this, uh, by Dr. Uh, Resnick and he, he's a retired dentist who basically um, does this on the side now for something to do basically. So uh, he and uh, Donna, the Donna Mazakowski, I believe is how you pronounce her name, the head nurse. We met with him, interviewed him, and um, you know Donna followed up on his references. He does a number of districts. I think he does Woonsocket. I think he does Warwick, though. I don't think Dr. Thornton's ever met him. Uh, um, but he's done a he does a number of districts, and so we checked. Donna called a number of uh, nurses that deal, you know, that like her, you know, will kind of coordinate the activities at different schools with them. And uh, everyone said he, you know, works efficiently and quickly and does what he has to do with the children. We didn't get anything, uh, any bad feedback on him. His license is in good standing with the state, and so uh, I recommend we award this so that we can fulfill this. Uh, service that we're required to do money's budgeted in the uh money's budgeted in the health budget uh just going through the paperwork he definitely has an impressive resume and having paid a dental bill for one child yesterday with insurance uh i would imagine this is a pretty good deal so um you have any questions miss smith uh yes thank you i just have one uh, it states that the said costs are available in the facilities budgeted and not so is that just? Yes, uh, yes. Well, they, well, you know what? Um, they would be available in the facilities budget too <laughs> at this time of the year. So I, I, I just wanted to just make sure. Yeah, I, there's a special health budget for that. Okay, so we can just update that fiscal note then? Right. Okay. All right, great. Thank you, Alex. You're we'll welcome. That fiscal note, I motion to approve. And I second the uh, motion to pay in the amount of $2,922. All in favor? Aye. All right, make sure I get back to my detailed record keeping over here. Two, nothing. Okay, next up, SCPI 07-2021-36, Classroom Computer Equipment Purchase a resolution authorizing and empowering the Cumberland School Committee to execute a purchase from Hub Technical Services of 44 Norfolk Ave, Southeastern Mass for nine True Touch interactive touch panels and Chromebook stands for the high school in an amount not to exceed $28,332. Um, and this will be coming out of the business office. Uh, costs are available in the, in the town, $832,000 lease. Yep. Mr. If you Brignano. recall last year, the town did a lease for us. It was about $700,000 for the high school project, which came in about 703,124. And there was like 132,000 for, um, for capital items. And we have, we have some money remaining in the, in the, in that lease for the, for technology. We've pretty much have spent, we're, we're getting to the point where we're, we're kind of almost have spent all the money for the high school security project because we're close to finish there. But we do have some money that in the lease um, under the technology side that can handle this expense. Okay. Does and this expense is, uh, you know, what, and, and Mike's here, he can go into it if, if you want him to, but this is basically because with the elementary schools now taking over the trans building, the high school is using rooms that weren't used in the past for teaching, and they need to be equipped with certain um, technology. Ms. Smith, your hand was raised. It is. Thank you. I just have one question, and it may be silly. We, I think purchased some of these and we had a lot that we were using within non-classrooms for distance learning throughout the district. Are there, is it in addition to that or can we use some perhaps like that Cumlin Hill won't be using anymore for those Chromebook stands? So I think that may be a, uh, a misprint. It's not Chromebook stands, it's the stands that go to hold the interactive boards up. Okay. So um, this will take the place of the areas that were, weren't teaching spaces. So instead of purchasing, what would the plan would be to be moving towards this new technology versus buying projectors now, that'll be outdated and then switching over to these. So 
these spaces needed, so they'll get a jump start on what we need to get done. Okay, great. That that makes a lot more sense. When I saw Chromebook stands, I was just wondering if we could just shift some things around. So thank you for that. And maybe we just need to modify that wording instead of Chromebook. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? Well, that would be me. I have none. And you want the wording changed of Chromebook to what was it, Ms. Smith? Uh, I, I believe that they are the, the stands for the touch panels. Correct. Okay. Touch panel stands. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So we could just take the word Chromebook out and it should be fine. Yep. Thank you. No problem. I'll make that a note of that. So with that, uh, we need a motion to pass SCPR 07-2021-36 um, with the word Chromebook taken out of it. Can I get a motion? I motion to approve. I second that. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Two to zero. Okay. Next is SC R-2021-03, fiscal year 2021, the 2022 amended school budget. A resolution authorized and empowering the Cumberland School Committee to amend the 2021-2022 budget from $74,163,874 to $74,392,284, an increase of $228,410 in order to be in compliance with the town approved school budget and school committee changes. Mr. Brignano. Sure. Um, I, I sent, and I think Cindy also put in your folders, um, the resolution and also the the budget document. So it might be easier to go to the budget document, the last page 46, rather than your resolution, because what I show you on that page is what the current number in the budget is and what the new number will be. So you can uh, follow along. Do you want to take a second to go there to page 46? Alex, is this the one that has a column carrying over into page 47? Or is that just something separate? Oh, uh, yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, that's just worksheet for mine that I left, I left there. So I, uh, I didn't see any reason to take it out. Um, it's page 46. It just has the two columns, current and proposed, currently and proposed. Great. Thank you. You all set, Dennis? Uh, my computer's acting a little slow. Here, okay, so you can follow just... through the resolution too, but and I'll yeah. I'll, I'll I'll read through the numbers. So okay. anyhow, what what we're doing here is we're going to amend both sides of the budget by that two hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred ten dollars. And so I'll start on the revenue side. On the revenue side, the original budget was a million eight forty eight three twenty three. It was the four percent ask from the town. We didn't get that. We actually got eight forty eight three twenty three. So we're reducing the revenues by a million dollars. The next number is we had 300,000 that we were going to use to buy curriculum that um, the state is going to force us to implement within the next three years um, with, with losing that money, losing money from the town. We, um, we down below, we're going to, re, you're going to see that we took the 300,000 out of the budget, out of the assistant superintendent's budget. So I didn't take money from the designated budget because we're not purchasing the, uh, the, the curriculum. However, I did increase from $789,000 to a million eighty nine thousand the um, the undesignated fund balance. So we're using the same amount of fund balance, but except for three hundred thousand being earmarked for a specific purpose, it's going to be to balance the budget now a million eighty nine thousand. Um, the next line on there is town master lease, and you can see that number last year was 520,123. When we put the budget together, I didn't know what those master lease payments would be because the town makes these payments on our behalf. It's leases that they've issued in the past for us. We used to pay, and um, 
some years ago, Bob Mitchell and I meeting with um, Mayor Murray, he agreed to pick those lease payments up. So Mayor Murray is following up on that. And so those lease payments next year, now that we, you know, I know them, a 693, 283. So the town will be making that payment on our behalf. We budget this on both the revenue side of the budget, and you'll see it down below the third line um, increase in town master leases. So either we'll get a revenue from the town um, if we pay them, or if the town pays them directly, we'll have the expense untouched, but we won't get the revenue. But so I'm prepared to go either way, but it's a wash on, a, on both sides. The next number is, um, if you recall last year, the mayor had said, if we were to run a surplus, I mean a deficit, he would fund us, he would, he would, back, he would back us up to up to $400,000. So if we had a surplus, he would come up with additional money. He's doing that again this year. It's non-maintenance of effort. If we run a surplus next year, we won't get that. If we run a $200,000 deficit, we would get $200,000. It's, it's just a buffer to keep the school department from running a, a deficit, and we won't get it if we run a surplus. The next number is capital reserve. And you can see the three, it was 125 in the budget. It's going to go to 300,000, an increase of 175. So if you see those, Kerry, you're, you're following along on the sheet, those three bolded items come up to the money that the town's going to put up. We were looking for a million 848. That number comes up to a million five. 548, 300,000 short. And we made that up by taking the $300,000 out of the assistant superintendent's budget for curriculum. Um, increase in tuitions. We've, we've, um, we've got, I, I, I think it's 16 kids. I'm not exactly sure of the number up from last year. And um, that I've talked with Heather Delfino. She's told me they've been approved by their school districts or whatever. So it should be an increase of about $115,000 in revenue. I put that in the budget. Uh, increase in preschool tuitions. We had it budgeted around $100,000 um, for, um, for a certain number of students. There's gonna be 16, 17 additional students that uh, Rachel has told me they're gonna be up to around 131 students, I think. And that extra student should, um, should, should generate about $30,000 in uh, preschool tuition fee. Down below, you're gonna see an increase in preschool um, TAs that are needed to handle these extra students. Some of them, Rachel says, with significant issues, you know, health issues. Um, and then the last number, high school security reimbursement. What this basically is, is because I was running a surplus, last year, some of the payments we made right at the end of the year um, for ADS, one of them being the 97,000 that Kerry asked a question about earlier at our meeting. Um, I didn't send in the reimbursement until the month of July. And so we've been reimbursed for that money now, and I'm going to take it into next year's budget. If I would ever run a deficit, I'd argue with the auditor saying, oh, it was really for last year. I need it in 21, but I'm just going to let it float into, into 22. And, uh, it's it's about two hundred twenty five thousand. The rest of that comes from and I just um, down below and 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 Dennis, I wish I had it open, but we we're, we're doing a, the high school project is going to be we've got about nine hundred and sixty six thousand dollars budgeted for that between the original outdoor scope of seven hundred and three thousand, and then when we did the indoor rooms, another two hundred sixty two thousand. We're going to get about forty two percent of that reimbursed. I'm trying to get that money for the school department. The mayor wants to claim it, which I don't blame him. I'm trying to propose to the mayor that the 703 that he's going to eventually pay the debt service back on because he issued that lease, that he take that reimbursement, which is 295, and the remaining would be about 110,250. And I'm going to argue for that for that money for the schools because that came out of our school budget from last year. That came out of our operating budget. So that 110 and the and the 225 that I um, recently took into this year from lease lease payments from last year for the high school security gives you that $335,000 that I need to balance this budget and you know it's, that's a big chunk of uh, how I how I close the gap. So that all nets the 228 410 in revenues. On the on the appropriation side the um, assistant superintendent curriculum purchase, I just mentioned that we had 300 in the budget. It's gonna be zero, we've cut that. 
increased breakage. This will probably be a tough number to achieve. We've in the past years, we've usually budgeted somewhere around 270,000 for breakage. What that basically is, we budget everyone in the district to be paid all 52 weeks every day of the year, the working, the working year. That doesn't happen. People either leave or they leave with that and they don't have sick time and different things happen. And so we usually generate some savings in salary. Um, we had 325 in the budget. I, I moved that to 554. Now we did achieve that number this year, but I think Katie would tell you it was a tough year filling positions, et cetera, with the pandemic. I don't know if we can achieve that again. We're going to have to watch that number. We may have to adjust the budget as the year goes on if we're not seeing that number. But that's, that results in actually a reduction in expenses of, of another 229000 by going to the 554. Um, the I talked about the town master lease payments. That's the same as above. It was 520 last year. I know no, I now know the number. 693 and that's a that's budgeted in the business office so we have the revenue up above and we have the expense in the business office they wash if you recall we had trouble but balancing the budget when we initially budget passed the budget and i had at that time put in the additional three retirees that we might see retire and we put in some ninety six thousand. well now that we we're at this point of the year we know what who we have, who retired, whatever, I'm proposing taking that out and making that zero. So that acts as an increase of the budget too. That 96,000 though became part of that 554. So I just really moved it from retirees to, to breakage. Um, the next item is, uh, I didn't realize that the that you had passed the policy mid-year mid last year, increasing the school committee stipends and I, it was budgeted at 16.2. I'm bringing it to the 36,000 that you're gonna, that we're gonna pay an increase of the 19.8. Uh, transportation, we had budgeted a savings of 174,000 by somehow doing something to make that part of the $400,000 that we owed Durham for, um, as Steve calls it, they're, they're solid for past years where we didn't wanna cut programs and they took less money that they were due and pushed it out to further years. I had already taken $174,000 of savings with the Proposal that's before you tonight, the 7% increase instead of the 2.5% the, the increase um, results in, in $118,000 increase in the transportation budget. So it's now $55,000 savings rather than one rather than 174 because of going from 25 to 7%. The next li line item is um, a curriculum coordinator that the school committee has asked that we put into the budget to work into Tony's office and to, um, to, to be the curriculum coordinator from nine, to nine through 12. Um, Dr. Thornton has asked that we put in the second Dean that Bob Mitchell was, um, was talking about that he wanted to, he thought was a priority. Um, we were gonna put in an ESSA, but we don't wanna, we're trying to limit that and Phil joint, jump in if you want. We're trying, we've got a number of jobs already in the ESSA two and ESSA proposed for ESSA three, we're trying not to, we're trying to not make that so such a, 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 a tough assignment down the road to be able to fund those. So we'll- Right, and I can we'll, chime in here too. As Alex said, between ESSA two and ESSA three, we may in the end have approximately 19 positions of that all going well, kids showing improvement. We, with Tony's office, would uh, assume six of those jobs would come off the board. And then you have 13 permanent positions, which we'd like to keep. Now with the dean out, we're down to twelve. So if we, you know, want these twelve positions over the next several years, each year would have to try to like, you know, get two or three of those on on board, if you will. So if, to me, getting one off as a is a good thing. Now we're down to that around twelve number as far as the jobs we want to keep long term. The uh, the next pos the next position I talked about a little bit up above. We increased the tuitions by thirty thousand dollars, but we're putting on an additional two TAs. And so the TA cost of the preschool goes from 173 up to that 221,992. Um, the part-time clerk at the high school, there's a part-time clerk there that I'm taking out of the budget. And I'm hoping that part-time clerk, because what we're looking to do is create a transportation coordinator, that part-time clerk has experience with the transportation um, busing company. And we're hoping that that person may be able to get that job. I'm not sure if that will happen 
that will uh, work its way through the district. But if it does, we're going to add that $25,775 to the budget. It'll be offset by that $13,000 of savings. And what that person can also do, where we're going to locate them, they can be a receptionist for the security project that at the trans building. They can provide um, you know, the ability to sign people in and that type of stuff. And also, uh, Katie and I talked about this the other day, we really don't have a receiving area at the high school. And we would try to create that person also and when people uh, receive goods, when we receive goods from companies. Oh, like this is all, um, I know that this is what you hope for, but we haven't, we, have, we still have a lot of talking to do about this. So I right. don't want anyone to think that that's, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If, if that doesn't work out, then the $13,000 part-time clerk would go back into the budget probably. But the 25775 is a request that we, we feel we need someone to handle, um, you, know, uh, to, you know, signing people in and out of the building at the trans building now that it's going to be, you're going to have elementary students there and the rest of it. Um, the next, uh, the next two are kind of a, uh, then, oh, the next one, assistant elementary principal uh, that we've added at both um, a 0.5 at both uh, community and BF Norton. We've, re we've put that position back in the budget and we funded it by reducing the assistant high school principals from three to two. So you see the 291, which was the, the salary for three now going to 194. So a $97,000 reduction is paying for that $95,000 position above. High school overages and sections. We, uh, uh, I think Tony and Dr. Thornton have met with uh, Adelfo. There's some concerns with the schedule that we may have to, we may need uh, some additional positions. We had eighty thousand dollars that I was, I had put in the budget uh, as a buffer against that. It may be, uh, it, may, it may be more. It may, if it's, if it's not that one hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars, I would probably, you know, look to bring the breakage number down if we don't use all of that. Um, and Alex, so, on that piece, typically what we do is we um, look at the schedule, each section or class, we see if they're going to run after we do what's called tumble the schedule. And then, uh, you know, once we assign all the students to the teachers, you can see if we might need a 0.4 or two classes of business or a 0.6 chemistry, pretty typical stuff. So we'll know more as we get the schedule finalized. Right. The, the next one, superintendent salary, and this is the difference between what um, Mr. Mitchell was getting and Dr. Thornton, and I think it's basically because um, it was the doctorate that it was same salary, but we added five. You know, we added the money for uh, for Dr. Thornton's uh, doctorate degree. Uh, charter and vocational tuitions underneath they go up about nineteen thousand six hundred one. We now have the number that we're going to be charged for tuition for each student, and the number I, it was I had estimated a little bit lower than it came in at. It came in at eight thousand four twenty three. And you multiply that times the 480 kids that we're projecting out to be in tuition schools next year, and it comes up to uh, that 19,000. The difference between what we had and the, not the 8,000, but the difference uh, gives you that 19,000. Uh, the changes up above all affect things like um, some of them affect um, Social Security. They all affect Medicare. So a small increase in fringe benefits from 18,104 to 18,125. And then we learned that the STAR um, program that the district uses and that the state paid for last year is gonna be funded again by the state. So we were able to take that out of the elementary schools and uh, for a reduction of that 17,000. So you get 228, 410 uh, changes in appropriations and that gets you your new number of 74, 392, 284. Thank you, Mr. Bignano. I know um, I ran through that quickly and there's a lot, but any questions, I'm happy to. No, just, just one request. I, uh, you know, I was trying to take notes as my screen was lagging a little bit. Um, so during the uh, full meeting, I would ask you to maybe give the truncated version of what you did, because I don't sure. think I would no, that, do what fine. you did. No, I'll, no, I'll, do, I'll would, do that. I'll do that. I wouldn't do any justice to your breadth of knowledge. So, oh, yes. um, so that was very helpful. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Bignano? I don't see uh, any. Smith. Move on. No. <laughs> Miss Smith. You guys are funny. So and the sun will come up tomorrow. So yeah. <laughs> just just so we can clarify when we get up there, we have the high school curriculum coordinator, which is good because that is what we approved at our last subcommittee meeting. 
But we also requested and approved for guidance to be put into this, an additional guidance position. Is right. that um, what we're calling Dean? Because I, I, I felt that I'm not seeing that happen here from what we had before. Uh, I, I, I believe, well, if you had a conversation, the, the, the guidance supervisor was really only a stipend. There's 3000 in the budget for a guidance supervisor. And the request was to increase it to $7,000. Um, and in conversations with, uh, and I didn't have them. So uh, I don't know if Dr. Thornton did or Katie or Tony. Yeah, Katie, I think Katie can start and I can finish. Katie, you want okay. to play in? Original plan and um, was to never to have a, um, and I don't think, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people at the high school about this. The original plan was not for a stipend position using ex existing staff at the high school. It involved an additional whole different person. So the way that it was approved last time was the $7,000 ad, which is really just $4,000 ad. It doesn't really add the human being that was contemplated all spring and early summer. So it kind of um, worked through that. And I think that there is a plan to address the guidance department in, in leadership there. Um, it's just not in a stipend position. Okay, and right now we're, we're modeling so we're that in ESSA. So we are, it is there, it is an ESSA at the moment. My apologies. Um, so that means that the ESSA plan that Mr. Damana has shared with us and shared with the state will be changing because at last meeting, he also gave us the whole what was submitted and what those positions were going to be used for and how those funds were going to be used. Last meeting was ESSER 2. Yes. Um, ESSER, ESSER 3 regard is, um, relates to this position that we're talking about, which is a ways down the, down, the, um, down the tracks with regard to, we're still planning it, but um, we are trying to figure out how to address because a lot of those goals are meant for the 21-22 school year, but um, we don't know timing-wise. We're trying to get some answers from the state on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then just one other point to bring up. Um, I, I know that we've discussed this earlier in the year. I know that we discussed it when the first original plans were coming out with ESSER and that it was discussed with the achievement. And then again, another school committee member uh, meeting. And that was that uh, Mr. Mitchell had stated that they anticipated it was 11 positions at that time and that they anticipated that those would come through attrition. So even though we're now looking at the 12 positions, um, the goal is still to try to incorporate or readjust during the use of those ESSER funds for several years so that they will come into the budget, but through attrition? Because we certainly can't just go and plan 12 new. Uh, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we're understanding that because we can't just then go to the mayor and say, well, now we need 12 more people and so right. we need another $2 million. I think honestly, it'll be a combination of both, uh, looking, sharpening our pencil, looking at a tighter high school schedule, you know, looking for attrition, but also potentially, I know as some bond, bonds retire, I think one in 2025 comes to mind. There's some funding that keeps us level funded. I believe that payment's around $300,000. So I think it's a combination of bonds retiring, some attrition and some uh, tightening also. Katie? Um, you know, the, some of these positions, most of these positions are meant to address learning loss uh, from the pandemic and um, therefore the expectation and hope is that because these positions are effective we won't need as many of them in the future because of um, because of uh, you know students catching okay so the only concern they will be absorbed in the lower FTE numbers um, from prior through 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 the attrition process I guess that's the best way Right. Okay. So the only issue that we really then have outstanding right here versus our last meeting is that that guidance role or additional would be part of ESSA 3 and that could be part way 
through the year before we even get that implemented? Or are we really targeting to have this position in for September? I mean, guidance was already um, overstretched. Yeah. And now that's a great, great question. I think right now at the superintendent level, we're talking to the state asking for direction on when they might process SO2, let alone SO3. And unfortunately right now, we're not getting any, any feedback from RIDE. I right. guess the question we're asking now is would districts proceed with their plans if they're not uh, you know, finalized and um, you know, put back to the districts? Would we go ahead and spend buying a position or, or a computer if we're not finalized until Thanksgiving? So it's very frustrating for districts where you know, we have this funding, but RIDE is really uh, backlogging with SO2 at this point. I think so we could probably get around that by amending our plan because SO2 is pretty liberal on what you can spend it on. So I would suggest to Phil, if he has to run these positions and we have, and, and we don't, and they say, gee, you didn't have an approval, so you can't pay for them all, you know, through those months that we amend them and maybe pay for you pay for charter school tuitions in the months of April, May, and June with ESSA funds, you know, we should have approval by then. It's going to, it's going to require amendments and constant reporting with RIDE and stuff like that. But I think we'll, we'll get there. One of the things I learned today, I was on a call and uh, nine, nine, and this includes charter schools and everything. So I don't know who they are. Nine, they've approved nine ESSA plans, 10 they've returned to districts for more information and, well, I haven't heard anything on Tony's, so um, apparently they haven't looked at us yet, though. I know Tony was one of the first ones in, so that's disappointing. Yeah. They should review them in order how they come in. I thought they did. Um, so, you know, we'll find out. But there, but there, was, there wasn't even a discussion by the ride people of ESSA 3. Not even a discussion. Okay. Don't I just want to make sure that we're not losing sight, that we really we need to try to figure out and determine a way to have a guidance had that extra guidance put into place to start the year. I mean, we already represent such a, you know, the, the ratio of students to guidance counselors already an issue within the town. And our, our students are going to need to have this additional person in place after the last year and a half we've had. I would just add to Miss uh, Miss Dunkinson just mentioned, um, you know, gu guide this guy position as it relates to learning loss, but you know, guidance is also uh, teachers are the first line of defense, but they're all guidance is the second line of defense when it comes to the mental health crisis we anticipate, or that's ongoing, and that uh, all schools are going to absorb uh, in the fall as kids try to reacclimate themselves to what what is I guess we would consider normal. So, anybody else have any questions? Here, here, here's one thought for the, for the committee. Um, Later on, you'll hear me ask for a uh, potentially a special meeting end of July to talk about a back to school kind of you know, final thinking. Potentially at that point, we may know, may, may know, know more about ESSA or you may give us direction to go ahead and proceed with that guidance position, knowing that you know, ESSA 3 is not uh, out of the gate yet. So we could certainly take your direction in that late July meeting and then you know, post and uh, proceed. But I think that is my request later on to have that special meeting end of July. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Seeing as there are none, uh, I need a motion to pass SCR 2021-03. Can I get a motion? I motion to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it, two to zero. Uh, we're running short on time here. Next up is uh, CHS activity reports. Uh, the current balance is four hundred five thousand six hundred uh, six hundred and eighty and fifty two cents. Does anybody have any questions? Had a chance to look at it. Seeing as there are none, I need an, a motion to approve the CHS activity report. A motion to approve. Uh, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it two to zero. Next up is public comments. Uh, is there anybody from the public who would like to speak? There is nobody in here at this time. Okay. And finally, uh, next on the uh, agenda is adjournment. I need a motion, a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Uh, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it two to zero. The meeting is adjourned at 559. Kept it under one hour. Thank you, Dennis, so, for running it. 
You did a, you did a great a job. It was, it was my pleasure. And I will see you all at the next meeting. I look forward to it.